Hello, this is Professor Wick from RN2 Professors with a review video for you on diabetes type 1. In this video, I'm going to review questions on diabetes. Diabetes is a disorder in which the body does not produce enough or respond normally to insulin causing blood sugars or glucose levels to be abnormally high. These questions center around type 1 diabetes and focus on different phases of the nursing process. I will show you how to determine what the question is asking and how to get the correct answer. Then explain the rationale for the correct and incorrect answers to give you a deeper understanding. Let's review. Here's our first question. The client diagnosed with type 1 diabetes has an A1C of 8.1%. Which interpretation should the nurse make based on this result? Number 1. This result is below normal levels. Number 2. This result is within acceptable levels. Number 3. This result is above recommended levels. Number 4. This result is dangerously high. This is an analysis question in the assessment phase of the nursing process. To answer this question, you must know A1C diagnostic laboratory values to determine if the data given in the question is normal or abnormal. An A1C is a blood test that reflects the average blood glucose levels over a period of three months. Let's read through the answers again and pick the one that best fits the lab data given. Number one. This result is below normal levels. Number two, this result is within acceptable levels. Number three, this result is above recommended levels. Number four, this result is dangerously high. The correct answer is number three. This result parallels a serum blood glucose level of approximately 180 to 200 milligrams per deciliter which is above the recommended levels for a diabetic. Normal levels are between 6% and 7%, which correspond to 120 to 140 milligrams per deciliter, which is an average blood glucose level. Clients with elevated blood glucose levels are at a risk for developing long-term complications. Numbers 1, 2, and 4 can be eliminated because the level is not below normal, normal, or dangerously high. Here's our next question. The nurse administered 28 units of Humulin N, an intermediate acting insulin, to a client diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at 1600. Which intervention should the nurse implement? Number one, ensure the client eats the bedtime snack. Number two, determine how much food the client ate at lunch. Number three, perform a glucometer reading at 700 hours. Number four, offer the client protein after administrating the insulin. This is an application question in the implementation phase of the nursing process. The key to answering this question is to look at the descriptor, intermediate acting insulin. This provides a clue to the correct answer by hinting at the drug action. Keep in mind the action of this drug as you decide what the correct intervention should be for this patient. Number one, Ensure the client eats the bedtime snack. Number two, determine how much food the client ate at lunch. Number three, perform a glucometer reading at 700 hours. Number four, offer the client protein after administering insulin. The correct answer is number one. Humulin N peaks at six to eight hours, making the client at risk for hypoglycemia around midnight. Having a bedtime snack will prevent nighttime hypoglycemia. Numbers 2, 3, and 4 are incorrect because the food intake at lunch will not affect the client's blood glucose level at midnight. The client's glucometer reading should be done around 2100 to assess the effectiveness of the insulin given at 1600. The onset of Humulin N in intermediate acting insulin is 2 to 4 hours, but it does not peak until six to eight hours, which is when the patient will be at risk for hypoglycemia. On to our next question. 
The diabetic educator is teaching a class on diabetes type 1 and is discussing sick day rules. Which interventions should the diabetes instructor include in the discussion? Select all that apply. Number 1. Take diabetic medication even if unable to eat the client's normal diabetic diet. Number 2. If unable to eat, drink liquids equal to the client's normal caloric intake. Number 3. It is not necessary to notify the healthcare provider if ketones are in the urine. Number 4. Test blood glucose levels and test urine ketone once a day to keep a record. Number 5. Call the healthcare provider if glucose levels are higher than 180 mg per deciliter. This is an analysis question in the planning phase of the nursing process. This is also a select all that applies question. To answer this question, you need to determine which interventions are correct regarding sick day rules. How is insulin affected when a patient is sick? As you read through the answers again, choose the ones that best fit this scenario. Number one, take diabetic medication even if unable to eat the client's normal diabetic diet. Number two, if unable to eat, drink liquids equal to the client's normal caloric intake. Number three, it is not necessary to notify the healthcare provider if ketones are in the urine. Number four, test blood glucose levels and test urine ketone levels once a day and keep a record. Number five, call the healthcare provider if glucose levels are higher than 180 milligrams per deciliter. The correct answers are one, two, and five. The most important issue to teach clients is to take insulin even if they are unable to eat. Glucose levels are increased with illness and stress. The client should drink liquids such as regular cola or orange juice or eat regular gelatin, which will provide enough glucose to prevent hypoglycemia when receiving insulin. The healthcare provider should be notified if the blood glucose level is 180. Regular insulin may be prescribed to keep the blood glucose level within an acceptable range. The other two answers can be eliminated because ketones indicate a breakdown of fat and must be reported to the healthcare provider because they can lead to a metabolic acidosis. And blood glucose levels and ketones must be checked every three to four hours, not daily. Next question. The client received 10 units of Humulin R, a fast-acting insulin, at 700 hours. At 10.30, the unlicensed assistive personnel tells the nurse the client has a headache and is acting really funny. Which intervention should the nurse implement first? Number one, instruct the UAP to obtain a blood glucose level. Number two, have the client drink eight ounces of orange juice. Number three, go to the client's room and assess the client for hypoglycemia. Number four, prepare to administer one ampule of 50% dextrose intravenously. This is an analysis question in the implementation phase of the nursing process. This is also a priority question. A key to answering this question is to remember the action of the medication and the role of the UAP. Keep that in mind as we read through the answers again. Number one, instruct the UAP to obtain a blood glucose level. Number two, have the client drink eight ounces of orange juice. Number three, go to the client's room and assess the client for hypoglycemia. Number four, prepare to administer one ampule 50% dextrose intravenously. The correct answer is number three. Regular insulin peaks in two to four hours. Therefore, the nurse should think about the possibility that the client is having a hypoglycemic reaction and should assess the client. The nurse should not delegate nursing tasks to a UAP if the client is unstable. While the other options are plausible for this situation, only one answer should be implemented first. Assessment is the first phase of the nursing process and is the priority in this situation. Here is our final question. The nurse is developing a care plan for a client diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. 
The nurse identifies the problem high risk for hyperglycemia related to noncompliance with the medication regime. Which statement is an appropriate short-term goal for the client? Number one, the client will have a blood glucose level between 90 and 140 milligrams per deciliter. Number two, the client will demonstrate appropriate insulin injection technique. Number three, the nurse will monitor the client's blood glucose levels four times a day. Number four, the client will maintain normal kidney function with 30 milliliters per hour urine output. This is an analysis question in the diagnosis phase of the nursing process. The key to this question is remembering that the nursing diagnosis consists of a problem related to an etiology. The goal must address the problem and the interventions must address the etiology. The question is asking for a short-term goal that is related to the problem of high risk of hyperglycemia. As you read through the answers, keep in mind that a short-term goal is usually a goal met during the hospitalization and a long-term goal may take weeks, months, or even years. Number one, the client will have a blood glucose level between 90 and 140 milligrams per deciliter. Number two, the client will demonstrate appropriate insulin injection technique. Number three, the nurse will monitor the client's blood glucose levels four times a day. Number four, the client will maintain normal kidney function with 30 milliliters an hour urine output. The correct answer is number one. The short-term goal addresses the problem of high risk for hyperglycemia because this blood glucose level is within acceptable ranges for a client who is non-compliant. Two, three, and four can be eliminated because two is an appropriate goal for a knowledge deficit nursing diagnosis and non-compliance is not always related to a knowledge deficit. Number three is an implementation of an intervention, and the question is asking for a goal. And number four is an example of a long-term goal. That's it for this review. Thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, check out the others in the series and click like, subscribe, and the bell to get notified when new videos are posted.